call us uh, September 4th uh, workstation to order. Uh, have a roll call. Okay. District 1, Mr. Guthrie. Present. District 2, Mr. Bedwell. Present. District 3, Ms. Gilbert. Present. District 4, Mr. Sis. And Chairman of Alpha. Uh, Look, we have our prayer by Mr. Porter. God, Father, we're blessed to be here, but we are, are thankful uh, for uh, this county and for all the people in this county. But right now we know that the, uh, there is a bad storm headed to the uh, southern coast of this nation. We pray that you'll be with those that are affected and just watch over them and guide them. We, uh, we know that it's a powerful storm and it's an evidence of your power and how small we are. So, God, we pray that you'll just continue to watch over us and watch over them. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. We join with you over in the prayer, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have anybody to sign up to speak other than who's on the agenda? No. And we'll recognize Ms. Teresa Bale. We'll speak to you. Yes, I would. And bear with me, please. I'm not a speaker by any means. I'm just plain old Teresa. I'm a retiree from the Jackson County Commission. Retired in, in 09 with 25 years service. Uh, 13 of which were in this office. So I know what you guys are going through, what you face at this particular time of year. I transferred out to the public works department where I was the office manager and I walked I worked hand in hand with the engineer preparing those lovely budgets <laughs> and I hated nothing more than a red pencil mark because I would have to do all this figuring and hand it prepared to the engineer who would take his little red pen and next morning it would be on my desk to do all over again so I know what you face during these times. Uh, I was asked to speak with you, the Commission in regard to the 2018 uh, retirees one-time bonus. Um, according to some of the information I have, which is not a lot, the last one that we actually received was in 2014. Um, there are some retirees, Ms. Doris here, one of them, that put in way more than 25 years, 32, <laughs> and uh, was very, a very dedicated employee, as, as were other retirees to the commission when they worked. Uh, all we could ask is that you please reconsider the 2018 one-time lump sum bonus. I know that you've had, uh, now I hope that I'm speaking correctly, one opportunity to review it. And, um, you know, as I said, I know these times are hard. I know it's hard to get a balanced budget. And I do know also from working with the county that things come up that aren't covered in that budget. And they manage to be handled one way or another. So, um, Please just reconsider uh, if you have to take a vote, think, um, you know, think about us that devoted those years of service to the county. Uh, we live from day to day, just like your active employees do, and uh, some of us live from that monthly paycheck to paycheck. So uh, that's, that's all that I could say about the matter. Thank you, except thank you for your time. Well, thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody have any comments? <laughs> thank you for coming, and, and thank you, ladies, for your years of service to the county. Thank well, you. Like you said, uh, y'all have done a service to us. We want to do what we can do. We'll, we'll look at it and see what we can move forward on. Okay. We appreciate, like I said, everything that y'all done for us. We'll see where we're at. Well, we appreciate, we appreciate you taking our time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, uh, Chair would like to uh, recognize Mike Sims. Good evening. 
for you, most of you who don't know me, I'm maybe a couple of you don't. I'm Mike Sims. I'm the county extension coordinator here in, in Jackson County. I've been here for uh, this 2002, so been here in the county doing extension work for a long time. Um, one of the things that, when we, uh, unfortunately, you, most of you didn't have an opportunity to come to the uh, commissioner's uh, luncheon uh, for various reasons. I understand it's probably a difficult time. But uh, at that time, that's when we normally do our overviews of what we do. And one of the things that I mentioned to uh, Mr. Ashburn and also Senator Livingston is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm of the mindset that you kind of fly under the radar and you come up when you need to. But I know we have a time that we really need to know and toot your own horn. And one of my old bosses told me a long time ago, if you don't toot your own horn, it shall not be tooted. <laughs> and when you don't toot it, then you know, people don't know who you are and what you do. And so it was, I found it beneficial for us to come in to our first work session, kind of let you know what it is that we do and, and some of the things that we bring to the county. That being said, uh, Donna Sands, she's going to mention a little bit about 4-H and then we'll talk about the trail and, and those kind of things. So this is Donna Sands, she works in my office. Thank you guys for having us. Can uh, you take one of these and pass it around? There's two, a grand gallon. Um, yeah. One of those. Yeah. Um, my name is Donna Sands and I do work for the Jackson County Extension Office. I've been there 10 years. I uh, volunteered for about four or five before then. Um, I have the privilege of uh, working with our 4-H youth along with other duties as assigned. Um, my, my core focus is Ground Farm and Nature Center programming, but I also do 4-H as well. And uh, Mr. Sims is going to talk a little bit more about uh, the Nature Center in a moment. But uh, this is what I'm handing out, as you guys are aware. Um, funded for the 4-H uh, in-school program comes through you all and without your support we would not be able to have an in-school 4-H agent. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of 4-H. You can see here on the shell form uh, the benefits that we have there. Uh, the next page you're going to see is um, the green page and that is our ES-237 form which we're required by federal law to uh, turn in. And as you can see we have uh, an active membership of 564 students that are enrolled in 4-H. If you flip over, you're going to see the breakdown of the grades that we serve. Uh, we pretty much touch um, all the ages, all the, the grades. Uh, we've engaged over 2,000 students uh, through 4-H just in this county alone. And we ask that you consider continuing that support for our 4-H program. A lot of the students that uh, participate in the in-school 4-H program would not be able to due to uh, economic circumstances. Um, this is sometimes the only club that they're actually involved in. Uh, they don't have the opportunity to go out and be part of the athletic programs uh, simply because of our county being so large and they, they live out uh, so far. So being in school where the kids are at offers us a great opportunity to uh, help those kids. Um, I'm happy to report that we had uh, 33 registered for County Roundup, which we do on a Saturday. We're competing with softball beginning and all that, so that's a little challenging. Uh, this year we had tornado warnings this week, so uh, <laughs> we, we managed to pull it off before the tornado hit, which unluckily we didn't have tornado. Uh, but uh, we had um, nine actually advanced to Regional Congress, uh, which was held at the Northeast uh, Al uh, Community College. And out of those nine, I am happy to report that Jackson County represented themselves very well. We had eight first place. Uh, no, seven first place, one second place, and one honorable mention. So uh, we did very well. We had one young man, the senior one and senior two, they advanced to state competition, and he placed second in the state storytelling. So some of these soft skills, public speaking, handshakes, uh, etiquette, um, they learned this. Robert Rule orders, which you guys practice every time you meet and come together, so it's important that they, they need to learn to, how to act in the public. Uh, this next paper that you see here, this is part of our enrollment form, which looks like this. And on the back, there's a nice little compilation of things that they would like to learn about. And they, <laughs> um, I'm only supposed to check three, but sometimes they check a little bit more than that. So um, that's okay. We enter it into our database and we have that. New this year, we have a form that we're going to uh, hand out to our 4-H sponsors, which is basically the in-school teachers and let them do a little survey of what they want to uh, see us, uh, educational components that we bring to uh, the classrooms. 
Uh, they consider it a fun activity, but we are required to do the education component, so we, we actually do a, a, I usually do science experiments, so we kind of bring that into uh, the classroom. Uh, we like to complement what the teachers are doing. Every one of those activities that they have a choice from are uh, actually related to uh, the curriculum grid uh, that the state standards, and they meet those. So uh, if you have any questions, y'all feel free to give us a call. Uh, we'd be glad to sit down and talk to you more in depth of what we do, but it's a great program. I hope that you continue to support it. Uh, Mr. Sisk, I know that your nephew, Mr. Dillon, mm -hmm. I call him my little Dillon, because when I met him, he was just little, yeah. he's a little bit bigger yeah. now, uh, but one of his first projects was a, a, a pumpkin that Miss Beverly rolled in with uh, truck dollies, and so we saw him through, and it was really, really nice. Uh, these kids are our kids, and uh, we take them under our wing, and we really... Uh, have an attachment to them. Uh, you can kind of see on the back some of the things that we've done, but um, it's a privilege to be able to go out and do this program, and I hope that we continue to, to have the funds available for uh, in-school 4-H agents. So with that, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Sims and let him talk to you about the ground farm. I have one question for um you're showing 400 plus kids in kindergarten through fourth grade. What do you do with those students? Uh, the, clover, the clover buds are technically, they're just really fun activities. They don't compete. When they get the uh, nine years old, then they actually get to compete in the monthly projects. We have four projects and there's 18 of those. And what they do in school, they have two projects to choose from. And they have to bring that project and they have to stand up and present. Are you in every school? No, I wish we were. Because I know no one comes to my school. Yeah. You're Bridgeport, Bridgeport Elementary. Um, I think that if that is going to change this year, uh, we, we're hoping um, the 4-H agent assistant position is 28 hours only. Uh, we kind of split that amongst our, our responsibilities. It is hard to do um, those programs, but we are trying to expand our schools. Uh, we increased it by, what, three schools last year? You know, you got you got to take into consideration on a thirty-hour week person, as large as the county is. By the time you get from one side of the county to the other, you know, we just really don't have the resources to do that because it's primarily funded by county commission, and uh, we just don't have the time. Yet. The FT, the, the finances to pay for a person to be in every school. So, uh, have we not lost one employee to help you do? Did we lose one of the employees to go a few months ago? Uh, we actually had an agent assistant that resigned in March, uh -huh. uh, but that is contingent on this fund and whether that will be replaced or not. Uh -huh. Until that time, Mr. Sims and myself will do that. We have another full-time uh, regional extension agent. She has to split her time between Madison and Jackson counties. She's actually going to pick up Bridgeport uh, Elementary School because she's already doing Bridgeport Middle. Mm -hmm. And we've got four already scheduled. Uh, so, depending on the outcome of what you all decide, whether to continue to budget, that will be replaced. If it's not, then we can't replace it. But stand assured that we will do what we can with our time. I help with uh, Ground Farm and Nature Center is my core responsibility. Mr. Sims is the County Extension Coordinator. I also help with adult leadership. I also help with junior leadership. So, um, I'm glad to do. I, I feel it's a privilege to work for the extension office. We are basically um, a public service mm -hmm. to the community, and uh, I can't say that there's one person there that doesn't take their responsibility to heart and give it all that we can. Uh, I'm born and raised here, uh, so I, my kids come up through 4 H. I volunteer for 4 H. I see the benefit of it, and it is a great program, and we will do what we can to meet the needs of our kids. Um, it's tough when you go into these schools and um, hear some of the things that we say. I could spend all day talking to you guys. And it kind of brings tears to my eyes a little bit. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I said, they they give it their all and we give it right back to them. So we squeeze a lot of time in uh, what we have to do in 40 minutes or 90 minutes. And what we do in 90 minutes, we'll do it in 40. It may be a little bit hurried, but rest assured, we get it done. Any questions? Uh -huh. Mr. Sanders, All right. The other thing you. we get out of your hair, I want to mention the uh, Graham Farm and Nature Center. Um, Graham Farm and Nature Center is a uh, property that's in El Safar, Crank Rock Valley. Um, we uh, 
acquired the property back in 2002 from uh, Bob and Nita Hale. And the whole purpose of the Graham Farm and Nature Center is to uh, emphasize youth development, um, environmental science and education, and animal sciences. And one of the things that's a part of that is we just, we acquired a grant in 2016 uh, from ADECA. And the whole intent and purpose of the grant is to uh, establish a walking trail. And we received $100,000 from ADECA to establish that walking trail. And when you go back and look at a lot of the stats that's going across, you know, outdoor recreation is one of those activities that people really get into. Birding is one. Hiking is another, mountain biking is one. This trail is a multi-purpose trail that is going to encompass hiking and mountain biking. And so we're about 90% done with the trail. We got to, we're got waiting for a decker to come and sign off on it. One of the things that I want to mention in regards to this when we talk about ROI, what I call return on investment. Um, I know I realize the county commission doesn't get anything from tourism. They don't get tourism dollars, but you do get uh, proceeds as people come into the county, purchase gas, they, res, um, they uh, purchase groceries, et cetera, et cetera. And Paint Rock Valley, as you know, is one of those areas that hadn't been a whole lot of uh, growth that's been going on recently. And so one of the things that we do in giving back is we hire local people that's out there. We have uh, two employees now that's that we've hired either through the grant or through the tobacco initiative grant. We, we have this initiative about no, no smoking that you'll see a lot about here pretty soon. And so also the walking trail. Uh, if you look at it, that's what it's about. Extension has invested quite a few dollars in, into this. And we're talking about ROI. One of the first things that we did when we acquired the land was put in a, uh, um, a water system. <laughs> That water system that we put in cost about $130,000, but we had to give that water system over to the uh, um, to the local water board. But that's part of doing business when you're trying to establish a center that's going to bring people in. And ACES is going to invest uh, to purchase a building or build a building that we can have for um, outdoor recreation. Right now. We don't have anything but a home out there. So when you have people that's going to come and camp and all those kind of things, you have to have showers and all of those things that are associated with that. And so at ACES, we're in the process of hopefully starting the capital campaign to build a building there that's going to encompass a kitchen, an outdoor meeting space, and a uh, and restroom facilities for young people as they go out to be able to shower and whatnot and those things. Right now we are a hub for um, kayaking and a hub for sports fishing, which are 4-H initiatives <coughs> that we have across the state. And we have all the kayaks and all of the uh, uh, fishing materials and, and uh, camping materials for young people to come out and be involved and get away from the handheld devices and get out where they don't have any internet and, and be involved in outdoor recreational activities. So I want you to understand and have some idea of these are some of the kinds of things that we're doing and bringing into the county that is beneficial to the county and also beneficial to the, um, the, um, um, the aging population. Also, juvenile obesity is a problem in the state and help kids get back and, and enjoy outdoor recreational activities, which we don't, we don't have a lot of. So if you looked at the article last Tuesday, I believe, uh, the, the Sentinel did a big article on some of the other things that we do in the county. You can take a look at that if you haven't had an opportunity to look at. And it talks about a vast amount of things that we do that, that taxpayers are not aware of that are free of charge. Most of our services that we have are not of cost to, to, the, to the citizens of, 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 of this county and of this state. <laughs> so I wanted you to see that. And the last thing, I passed this around. won't necessarily go through it. But this is a one pager that um, I think that Mr. Uh, um, Ashton may have passed around. And you can kind of see when you look at those numbers what the, what we call ROI again. We keep talking about that word or what that return on investment is when it comes to the amount of extension agents that are in this county that's working. 
and based on the investment that we have, and you'll see what that is and what those numbers are. If you'd like to talk about that at a later time, I'd be glad to speak with you one-on-one -on -one or as a group or whatever the case may be. So that's that's why we're here, kind of let you know what it is that we do, and any questions that you may have, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Come on, come on, uh, I mean, I'm not going to hide no issue. I'm born and raised over there and talk about that. And uh, you the ground farm, you the ground brothers, Rick Jane, Bob, all of them there. And uh, the only issue I had done, I appreciate everything you've done right here. I mean, missed my nephew because I was in 4-H growing up and dealing with agriculture every day. The issue that I have with, with this, I think it, to me, as commissioner, it should be put in the education side, Board of Education, which it is an education deal. And we've got so many needs here in this county. And uh, $32,000 is not a whole lot. I know what you're coming to the table about. But you know, we, we as the taking care of taxpayers' money, it's hard to come out. It's like these ladies here, retirees. And uh, you know, I've said all the time, these other commissioners here, I said, my thoughts are we're spending tax dollars sending it over there each month to more education. This is an education deal. And, uh, and you know, with us giving a free ride, to the building, and uh, if you're staged in, you know, it's kind of hard for me to sit right here and, and agree with some of this stuff, you know. Do we pass it on, or do we make a decision of what's worthwhile, you know? Because we've got so many things with council on aging, it's in desperate need. I mean, elderly folks, they can't even get their medication and stuff, you know. But I'm just one voice, but I don't want to hide nothing and say, hey, why did he say something then? Right. So. What I'll say is that when it comes to ACEs, and we used to have agreement with the county commission across the, the state, that in every county in, in across the state, the county commission has traditionally funded and provided a, a housing for the commission, I mean for the extension office, as well as funding. Now you can go back and what is the uh, county commission's uh, chairman, what is his name? Um, over the, Parker, 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 well, prior, prior to him, yeah. Prior to him. yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, but all of the commissions across the state of Alabama, mm -hmm. if you go back and do the research on it, they either pay for, all of them pay for housing, provide housing, everywhere in the state. In all six or seven counties, they provide housing, as well as if they can afford it, they provide an appropriation to the extension office. Well, I understood that. We just came back from a conference, and I talked to several of them. But you know, when you put them out there, like some of them, that's got funding right. to do it with. And uh, you know, my issue was, well, you got Auburn and A and M, two of the richest counties in here in the South. And I said, I just that's my personal thing. We've got other things that we got to look at also. But, uh, do you have any other uh, schools, uh, districts, or that contribute to 4-H? Or do you know of any in you know our neighboring counties or anything that uh, not school districts? School, school districts normally don't tradition don't uh, give allocation <laughs> to 4-H at all. Nowhere in the state that I'm aware of, and I've been doing this for almost 28 years. And and of my 28 years, I've never known a school system to make an allocation for the 4-H program. Never. But if a county commission has always provided, the schools have never been approached with it. Well, they have, even even city city governments have. But you know what 4 H is, it's one of those act activities just like if you had a 4 H club or if you had a a uh, science club or whatever, an enrichment program, mm -hmm. that's kinda how they look at it from that enrichment perspective. So but they they've never done it. Right. Ever. I don't want you to think I'm negative on it, but like I said, I'm agriculture culture person. But you know, just looking at the funding and where we're at, and uh, it's been on my mind a whole lot. I said, I think this should be an education deal, which it is education. It's just a, something to grow on, you know, put it down the road. Right. It's just, just something that hadn't, hadn't happened. But when you look at that one page, I want you to take a look at that and pay attention to see what that investment that ACES is investing in this county. Now, that investment is not going on in any other county across this mm -hmm. state. Uh, and so I, I need to make sure that you understand that when you look at those numbers and you look at the people that are coming in to serve this county, it's 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 probably eighty to ninety to one on on ROI. So so you get it back 
more than, than what that it is that you're putting in, but I want you to make sure you look at that. Mm -hmm. And those are true numbers. When you reference ACES, who is that? That's the extension, oh, Alabama Cooperative oh, Extension oh, System. That's ACES. Used to be the, most people know it as a county agent, but it's, we changed and uh, restructured back in, two, in 1995, and now we call it Alabama Cooperative Extension System. We're the educational outreach for A&M and Auburn. And the educational outreach is not limited to just youth. It's adults as well. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your thoughts? I mean, while you're here, if, something, if we just said, hey, we don't have the funding, is uh, A&M, Auburn going to be able to come up with this thing? No. no. I mean, when you, when you look at what they're doing now? Yeah, they ain't going to let that ground farm. I mean, that's the issue. They don't purchase the land. Well, they didn't purchase the land. They had to give them to them. But when you, you know? look at that, we're talking ground farm. That's just one entity over here. We probably do 40 or 50 programs. So the ground farm is a program. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about 4-H is a program. You talk about row crops and ag is a program. So that's one program that they still have uh, agents that provide expertise. But when it comes to 4-H, the way that's designed is if you're going to have an in-school program, you have to have funding from your local government to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, that's why a lot of these counties that don't have, when you get down in the black belt in those counties that don't have a 4-H person, that's because of the funding. But the ones that really thrive and do well, they get funding from the, from the, uh, from the commission in order to be able to do that. So to answer your question, if we don't have it, then, you know, these kids are not going to be able to have that program because between what I have to do with leadership and all the other things, I just don't <coughs> have the time to do it, and that's why we have this person to provide these services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or are you and Donald feel like you're going to be able to carry on the other lady that, I mean, it, well, know. well, see, the thing is, is one, you know, I, I think that we want to try to see what we're going to do as far as this is concerned, mm -hmm. and we'll hire somebody else if we get the funding for it. Right now, we have uh, uh, we have a grant, Kelly Weber. Kelly used to work at Paint Rock High, uh, Valley High School. He's doing a, uh, he's working until September on a grant, tobacco initiative grant. Ideally, I would like to hire him to move on since he's already in the system, so it's just a matter of him transitioning in and, and doing 4-H because he's already employed. But as of September 31 of this fiscal year, he'll be unemployed because the grant was only six months. Right. Do you have a car you could leave with? I, I have one in the truck. I can bring and give it back to you. Yeah, not a problem. Are you? Do you have something? Yeah. Bring it back and drop it off. Any other questions? Any other questions? We'd love for y'all to come in and sit down and talk a little bit longer. I know y'all have limited time, but we'd love to sit down and meet with y'all even in the after hours. We appreciate y'all coming to us, and I apologize for not making it. I think yes. this year was the first year out of the election right. year, I'm budget saying. time. <laughs> you know, right. and, and we're we all just part time, you know, okay. mission jobs in the afternoon. So, right. uh, but we, we so appreciate y'all. Appreciate so. what you do for a county, and. Um, you talk about it. And, and you know the thing that I want to leave you with. You know I understand the the, the, the perspective of the funding, uh, and if it comes down to it, something is better than that. You know, and so so at least take that in consideration. If that be the case, uh, you know we'll take what we have and try to make the best out of it as we always have. Well, I thank y'all for coming to present it. And like I said, it's it's hard to say no to the organization. I mean, everybody. Is in need of something, you know. And uh, we, as the people, have got to make a decision what's the best for this county. So I thank y'all for showing up. Right. And nothing else. We'll move on to our discussion items. I'm going to approve this. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our first discussion item is uh, the, the National Calories upcoming uh, Thanksgiving Christmas holidays. Do we want to do anything outside of what we've already approved on the state calendar? Well, we weren't able to um, 
give them that part for Fourth of July. I think they need to try to something. Is there any point that's what we did? We said we do something there you know, Christmas or Fourth of July. In the middle of the week, and these are conveniently filing for the other. <laughs> Yeah. With no objection, we'll place that on next week's uh, agenda uh, for a, a, a recommendation and a motion. Uh, next item, Southern Health Partners contract. Uh, I have a representative here from the Sheriff's Office to discuss it. Bob, I, I can see that a little bit for you, yes, sir. Uh, we just got that. Uh, about two days ago, and it's it's our annual contract that where they all provide all the services at our jail. We just need to renew it, don't we? Yeah, basically had a very small. I mean, it, when you're looking at the, the amount of money it cost us to run that service, it went up a fraction of a percent, which was about seven thousand for the total year. And we have actually searched and. Entertained some other offers in the we, past. Yeah, we we talked about that last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, about two or three years ago, there's hardly anybody else that does this, and we did have a an entity come by and pr do a presentation. Of, uh, I think about two years ago, two or three years ago, and it didn't provide uh, the right, the type service that we have, and quite frankly, most counties do Southern Health Partners. And uh, but I just wanted. To, to let you know that we did get, they were late getting it to us. Normally we get it toward the first part of the month and it come in my email and, and come, matter of fact, come in the mail today. But uh, it's uh, again about a $7,000 increase and I sent you all an email to recommend we just go ahead and budget. In our budgeting numbers we're working on right now for next year, we just need to increase that, that, that expenditure on up about another 10000 for next year's budget. Be my recommendation. There's no further discussion on it. We'll put it on the next week again. Uh, our third and final item is Public Works Annual Bid. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, we solicit bids every year for supplies and materials that we use throughout the course of the fiscal year. and. Um, those bids were opened August 20th, 2018. After review, you'll see a summary sheet there of what we are recommending and why. So uh, most of these are most of these are straightforward. And if you do have questions, the folders are there on the table. So um, I wanted to present this now in hopes that if anything catches your eye that we can answer any questions you may have or, or satisfy any concerns that there are. Most of these are straightforward and in the parentheses you'll see either low bidder, only bidder, um, that represent that. There were a couple, as we usually have, that I would like to discuss and explain our recommendation. And the first one of those is on page two of the summary sheet um, and it's herbicide. Uh, there were the, sh the folder will detail how many bids solicitations were mailed out. Um, there were a lot. We had three returned. Um, last year it was awarded to Alina Chemical, and they are the lowest bidder for most of the products this year also. So there were three on the returned, and they are lower than everyone else on most. The two exceptions are the ones listed there below their name, and that is two chemicals. One is 2,4-D and the other is glyphosate. Um, a local supplier, the local co-op, is actually cheaper on both of those products and they are both high-use products. So we are recommended to actually split that award to all the products except 2,4-D and glyphosate and keep those two local. Um, they're not much cheaper, but they are some some amount cheaper. So, uh, with the quantities that we will see, I think um, I think that would be the wisest move to make, as well as staying local. And I will say this: that Helena is the other insect bid, so the the only other bidder was out of state. So, um, if there are any questions about any of those chemicals or why we are recommending that, um, please let's talk. Let's talk further about it. One other, one other item here that I wanted to talk about that's a little, little out of the realm of normal 
is the very last ion on there, and it's liquid calcium chloride. <coughs> so we use liquid calcium chloride for a couple of reasons. One is road bed stabilization or road or pavement preparation in our road bed. The other is as a snow and ice material. It's a de-icer, so it's a supplement to our liquid brine. Um, it's used in small concentrations with that brine, but it lowers the freezing temp of that aqueous solution well below the freezing mark and allows us to operate in below freezing temps. Okay, so um, this the the issue with return bids on this one comes in with no rules and transport. The uh, electronic log laws have affected our transportation. Uh, or have affected transportation in general, but it, it plays in with the suppliers that we relied on for this product. Um, there are terminals in Tennessee, and there are terminals in South Georgia where we had received this product in the past. The South Georgia terminal, or the supplier that ships from the South Georgia terminal, had historically been the cheapest supplier for this product. With the electronic logs, they are in a position to where they are just outside the range that they can still supply the product at the price. So when we solicited bids, it was sent to the folks that, that normally submit bids and, uh, and others. But the two that were returned was the, the, the supplier who uses the South Georgia terminal and the one from the Tennessee terminal did not have time to turn the bid materials around and submit their bid. We had just last year. This was not this was not an item that was bid out. You know, solicited bids on for contract and was awarded. We still purchased it. We just didn't exceed uh, public bid law levels with the purchase. So we knew then an idea of what the market was and what we could buy the material from. So when we receive our bids back and they're twenty five cents a gallon higher than what we were just able to buy for, we knew we had a problem. So what, what we're proposing is that we reject all bids. We resend these things out to the same people and we make sure that we have ample time. Uh, it, it wasn't actually our fault the way I understand it from a conversation. I think documentation was mishandled, not turned in. Um, so we would like to resend that and make sure everything gets proper delivery and gets in the appropriate channels and reevaluate our bids because I think we stand to see a significant savings by everybody at the table able to bid on this. Yeah. So it's not a state bid item, it's not a state bid no, Not to my knowledge. I'll check that but not to my knowledge. Um, even, even if it were it's most likely diff, you know, different for different locations, so we'd probably want it dialed in right, right to us. Are there any other questions about items I didn't talk about or anything in there that, that we need to have further discussion on? Crushed limestone, you know that's been controversial in years past. Um, it's pretty straightforward this year. I think a flip to the folder would give a very... Um, there, there is somewhat of a split on bituminous surface treatment. Charles Watts, which was um, low bidder for bituminous surface treatment, so that's going to be chip sealing. And then bituminous surface treatment, micro surface and seal coat. Uh, that's that's different. That's microsurfacing, what we call microsurfacing. It's actually a slurry seal. So it's a different product. So that's that's the split there. That's all I have unless anyone has any questions about any of the products. This high performance coal patch, have we used this before here? Yes, sir. That's um, the the way that works is we we have a specification on the bituminous product and it's per gallon. That specification includes a pug mill. So whoever bids on this product, not only does their liquid have to meet that specification, but they also have to provide a pug mill for on-site mixing. 
that eliminates the expense of having to bring in a third party hot mix plant right. or some other you know party to mix the material okay but that is the same provider that we have been, that we've had right. I'm not sure about anybody else's opinion but I agree with the split on the harp side yeah. and the resend bid or the check bids again on that last one I I'm thinking pretty too. sure it's in the animals. Good idea, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. Anything else on angle bid? Nothing else. We're going to ask for closing remarks. Uh, Mr. Campbell, do you have anything to leave that out? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ford? I don't have anything. Mr. Smith? No, sir. Mr. Gilbert? No, sir. Okay. One thing I have on the 4-H, going back to that, I want to say, uh, when I was younger, you know, my grandpa had cows, and I grew up having to milk cows and do all this kind of stuff, but my kids didn't, and without 4-H, they wouldn't have had any exposure to it, because I'm not a farmer. I don't like it. You know what I mean? I don't want to have that. I don't even want to grow a garden. So, so my kids, the only exposure they had was to that. So I think a lot of these kids that you look at these numbers, 500 and something kids, that's the only exposure they got to this. So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. I'm, I'm a biggest proponent of that, you know, balanced budget, but that's something that we just need to consider, I think, because a lot of the kids, that's the only exposure they have to it. That's all. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything to add. Uh, Motion to adjourn. I got a motion. A motion to second. All in favor, Dan? Aye.